Hi, my name is Bernard Sheridan. I'd like to welcome you back to Par Breakers Golf Academy. And today we're going to take a look at the swing of John Senden. And John just won the Valspar 2014, his second tour win. He's had quite a, a string of seconds in this event. Okay, he's actually uh, coming second twice in this event, and it was essentially his time. And and really, of course, where he closed the deal in this event was not with his driver as much as his short game and putting. But today, we're going to take a look at his swing so that we can understand that um, if your swing is on the plane of your shoulder coming down into impact, okay, it does not necessarily mean that you are taking it over the top. So I see so many players who, um, when they swing down and the shaft is steeper, um, they believe that they're, they have an over-the-top motion, and, uh, but it depends on your body type. So John is a tall guy. John is six foot three. So he is predominantly a shoulder swinger. Okay, so in other words, the plane that he swings on is on his shoulder line and not really on his torso line or on his hip line. Okay, so and what I mean by that is if we were just to do a quick, quick couple of, of lines here, there's hip line. There is torso line, or like kind of right through his elbow. And here is shoulder line, okay? So and we're going to see that he swings on shoulder line and not one of the other two, okay? Now, one of the main reasons he does that is because of his height, okay? And his setup. So what I want you to notice is that John has a very tall setup, okay? His upper body is taller than the average player, okay? He's here at 100 degrees in relationship to the shaft. So we usually see players at 90 degrees, and we've talked about that in the past to create a lot more leverage. But because of the height that John has, he finds it much easier to have an upright swing because, it, because he's so tall, okay? And we can see this happen in a lot of taller players. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw two lines here. First, the, the first line we're going to draw is right on the shaft, which essentially is just a little bit above his belt line, okay, which is what we like to see it address. And the second one we're going to draw is on his shoulder plane. And we're going to see how... As he swings through here, okay, he's really on that shoulder plane coming down into impact. So as he starts back, okay, what I want you to notice is his hands start to lift and he gets under but parallel to that shoulder plane. And then starts to, by the time he gets to 9 o'clock, he's right on his swing plane. Okay, so now his, his uh, left arm is parallel to the ground in a 9 o'clock position, okay, and it's up by his chest, not down by his waist, okay, so this is natural for John, and as he starts to move to the top, his hands ride that plane, okay, and he gets to the top, and as he starts down, and we're really seeing some flex on that shaft as he starts down, okay, bang, his hands drop immediately with the shaft on that plane, and they're just going to ride that plane, that club head is going to ride parallel to that plane on the way down, okay, so, and he's going to be right on his shoulder line, okay, so as he starts to come into, into impact, He's still riding that plane. I want you to notice that we're seeing a little bit of an unhinging here due to the steepness of his swing. Okay, 
but as he gets to impact, he's right back onto that shoulder plane. And as he comes out, the shaft just rides right along, and now his hands ride right along. And the shaft comes right out of the left side of his body, perfectly on plane. Okay? And then his hands just ride right up that plane to a finish, which rotate his shoulders around to the target. Okay? Now, with this more upright swing, too, what I want you to notice is how level his shoulders are, okay, at the finish. Because he's more around his body, okay, you would think he's more up and down because the shaft is steeper. But his after impact, his shoulders mimic that same swing plane that he's riding on with his hands. And then his shoulders just kind of come up and level out. Okay, great position. Great position at the finish. Full rotation of lower body too. We see that foot even a little bit past 12 o'clock because, uh, because of the rotation. So if you're a taller player, okay, or feel more comfortable, it's okay if you swing on your shoulder plane. If we take a look at a few other players, and we'll, and we'll maybe touch base on those players later, okay, but what comes to mind for me immediately, probably another shoulder plane type swinger, is, um, is Steve Stricker, okay? I believe that he's a shoulder plane swinger too. If you take a look at the video that we uh, did on him, we'll see whether that, because I'm pretty sure I have a swing video on him up there too. So once again, uh, just because you're coming down on your shoulder plane does not necessarily mean that you're an over-the-top swinger, okay? And it does not necessarily mean that you're taking it across the line, all right? You can still be on plane if you're coming down on your shoulder plane. So if you're a taller player, you're going to feel better swinging this way. So once again, thanks always for being with us. I'm Bernard Sheridan, and uh, if you have the opportunity, uh, check out our our podcast, our weekly podcast. And we're this week we're going to talk about the different planes in the swing, okay? And we'll have and you can subscribe to us on iTunes at Breaking Par is the name of the podcast. And we'd love to have you listen to that, too, because we're here to help you take control of your game. It's all about you, and we're and Par Breakers is here to help you. So have a great day. Try to keep it in the short grass, and I'll see you next time.